Reaching the most remote parts of the world, the ministry of Stephen Brooks International continues to strengthen the church and lead the lost to Christ. Stephen ministers with remarkable healing anointing, prepared to be strengthened with solid biblical teaching that will inspire you to walk closer with the Lord. Now it's time for Fire and Glory. Hello, my friends, and welcome today to Fire and Glory. I'm Pastor Stephen Brooks, and I'm going to be teaching today from Mark chapter 10. And I want to invite you to take your Bibles and open them up and join me in this study of God's Word. We're going to take the good Word of God. We're going to sow it, just like you can sow a seed. We're going to sow it into our hearts. It's going to produce a blessing of righteousness, a harvest of peace and joy in our lives. So let's take this good word and put it in our hearts right now. We're in Mark chapter 10, and we're going to pick up today in verse 50. Last week we were studying about the miracle that was going to be taking place in the life of blind Bartimaeus as he is right on the verge now of receiving his sight through the miracle working ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we pick this up today in verse 50. It's a key verse. It's the hinge verse that gives us insight to why Bartimaeus received from the Lord and why also sometimes people fail to receive their miracle from the Lord. Mark 10, verse 50, it says, And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Bartimaeus, he's blind. He's been sitting by the side of the road begging. A great crowd, a great multitude has come by because they're attracted to the ministry of the Lord Jesus. And uh, Bartimaeus hears that is Jesus. Faith has come into his heart because faith comes by hearing. He's heard about the miracle ministry uh, of Jesus. And Bartimaeus identifies Jesus as being the son of David. He says, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And he's saying that over and over. And eventually, uh, he tried to get suppressed by people in the crowd who thought maybe he was losing his mind. And look, if they persecuted Bartimaeus, don't think they won't persecute you. And Jesus' ministry was under heavy persecution. When you read through the Gospels, uh, you see the tremendous persecution that he faced. And I just want you to know, if you believe in a miracle-working ministry, don't be surprised that persecution follows that because Jesus said that the servant is not greater than the master. If the master was persecuted, I'll guarantee you the servants who follow and imitate the master are going to be persecuted as well. You know what I decided to do with persecution years back is just be like a duck uh, and it's just like water off of a duck's back. I'm just going to let it run off, not paying any attention to it, and keep on going and keep on praying for the sick, keep on praying for impossible situations and see God do miracles. Okay, and so uh, Bartimaeus was persecuted. Jesus' ministry was persecuted. But Bartimaeus got more bold and got even louder and kept calling out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus finally stood still because those words were ringing in his spirit because that was a sign that somebody has faith. See, Jesus had the anointing and he also had faith, but somebody has to connect with his anointing to receive that anointing and cause it to flow. And so that's why he was always looking for faith. And that's why in Nazareth, his own hometown, he could do no mighty miracles there because uh, the people greatly disrespected him and they did not connect with the anointing upon his life. Now, Bartimaeus takes his garment. When he's called by Jesus, he actually takes his beggar garment, he takes it off while he's still blind, and he throws it away. This is what some people would try to counsel you or I to do today. They would go up to you with well-meaning intentions, with sincere hearts, and they say, look, I know that you're trying to believe the Bible, but you never really can tell what God's going to do or not. And you know, it could be symbolic. It could be spiritual. Who actually even knows what it means? So, you know, this thing might not work out for you. So just do this. Take off your garment and roll it up and hide it behind your back. That way, when you walk up to him, he won't see it. And that way, if it doesn't work, you could walk off and you'll still have your garment. 
But see, there's absolutely no faith in that. And when you walk with the Lord, when you follow the Lord, uh, he will cause you to become more reliant upon him. And uh, baby Christians, the Lord will take it easy on many times and he'll make sure they have all kinds of safety nets. But I'll tell you what, one of the most securest places you can be in the entire world or universe is to be walking in close fellowship with God. You'll never be shaken. Even if uh, 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 a bad or evil evil report would come to you. It won't shake you a bit because you know God's bigger than that trial or situation. And God's going to do a miracle for you just like he did for old blind Bartimaeus. So he took that garment and he threw it away while he was still blind. That's pretty wild, isn't it? That's some pretty strong faith. You know, um, I remember hearing years back about a story uh, in uh, Canada, in Niagara Falls. Now there's two parts of the Niagara Falls. There's the American side, which has the waterfall, and there's the Canadian side that has the horseshoe-shaped part of the waterfall. And the Canadian side is, is a much bigger waterfall, much more higher volume of water going over it. But uh, decades back, there was a high-wire trapezist who actually took a very thin uh, cable and ran it from one side of the fall all the way over to the other side on the horseshoe side of the falls, the Canadian side. And that's dangerous, that's uh, scary. So he took a cable, stretched it all the way across uh, the waterfall and uh, he got out there uh, on that cable with a uh, with a uh, you know with the pole, the balancing pole, and he walked all the way across Niagara Falls, right over the drop off point on that uh, high wire uh, cable. My goodness, I tell you what, people started to come from all over the place, and and the crowds begin to uh, swell and grow larger. And so after he walked all the way across, he set the pole down, and then he walked all the way back across to the other side with no pole, just out there balancing by himself, and he got back on the other side and that now there's several thousand people there and they thought man this guy is really good he's really something and uh Next thing he did is he got out there with a wheelbarrow and pushed a wheelbarrow all the way across to the other side, went right over the Niagara Falls on a high wire and, uh, and balanced that wheelbarrow, pushed it all the way over to the other side. And people are just saying, you know, we've never seen anything like this before. And there was a young boy in the audience who said, oh, you must be the greatest uh, uh, high wire walker that, that ever has been. I've never seen anybody as good as you. You're the best, you're the greatest. And that man, the high wire trapeze walker, he looked at that young boy and he said, son, do you really believe that? And that young boy said, yes, you're the greatest that that has ever been. And that man said, well, son, then come over here and get in this wheelbarrow. Oh my goodness, my friends, are you ready to get into the hands of God? That doesn't mean you go out and do something silly and you quit your job or you go off and do something that God didn't tell you to do. But there are times when God will ask you to step out on faith that's what Bartimaeus had done. He had reached the point where he knows he's not going to need that garment anymore, even though he's still blind. He knows he's there. And when your faith is there, the word, the rhema word, the living word of God, I guarantee you, I promise you, when your faith is fully developed, that word will absolutely hold you up every single time you walk upon it. You know, we think about uh, Peter who was in the boat with the other 11 apostles and the Lord Jesus came walking along the water in the middle of the night. There was a storm and uh, a terrifying experience to the apostles uh, to see this man walking on the water in the middle of a storm. They, they were just overwhelmed uh, by all the things that Jesus was doing sometimes. It really stretched them. And when you walk with the Lord Jesus, I'll tell you one thing, he will stretch you like a rubber band and he'll develop your faith. And here comes Jesus walking on the waves of the sea, stepping over the waves and right in the midst of that storm. And he gets close to the boat while he's still out there on the water. Water, and Peter puts the most unusual question to the Lord. And the question really can only be answered in one way. Peter said, Lord, if that's really you, ask me to come out there with you. Well, what's the Lord supposed to say? No, it's not really me. Uh, it's not me. It's just a, a, a hologram. Well, no, the Lord said, yes, come. In other words, the Lord was saying, yes, it's me. And, but he responded with just one word. And he, he said to Peter, he said, come. And you know what? Peter walked on the water. Now, sometimes people focus on the fact that he sunk, that he took his eyes off the Lord and saw the waves and saw all the wind blowing. And sure enough, the Bible tells us that he did begin to sink. The Lord reached down and caught him. And sometimes people focus on the fact that he sunk. Well, at least for a little while, he got out there and actually he was walking on the water just like Jesus was doing. Okay? So we do have to give Peter 
some credit. So we could say Peter was walking on the water, and in a sense he was. But do you know what was really holding Peter up? It was Jesus said to him, come. And he stepped out on that word, and that word supported him. Now, if Jesus said, don't do it, uh, the timing's not right, and he'd have stepped out on the boat, I stepped out of the boat on the water, he'd have gone down the second his feet hit the water. But because the Lord said, come, he gave a divine invitation. Peter was walking on the water. And do you know why Jesus was walking on the water? Because the Holy Spirit told him that he could come, and Jesus stepped out, and the word to him also held him up. Oh my goodness, how we need to only step out when God gives us his divine guidance and direction. So Peter uh, was a great example of walking on the water. You can walk anywhere God calls you to walk at. You can be a success anywhere that God tells you to go, any place God plants you. When God puts you there, when God puts you there, you will be successful as you walk with him. So Bartimaeus took that old beggar's garment off and he threw the thing away and he got rid of all of his safety nets, got rid of all the safety nets. You know, you have to understand not everybody wants to get rid of their safety nets. Not everybody wants to be healed. Some people actually would rather stay sick so that they could have the easy access of handicap parking. You think, Pastor Stephen, you can't be serious. Yes, I'm serious because God has given me a healing ministry by his grace. And some people don't want to let go of their safety nets. It's not that they don't want the healing. It's just that you can't have both at the same time. Because if you get healed and your back gets healed and your legs get healed, you cannot park in the handicap parking anymore. And some people are lazy. And some people also like all of the attention that's given to them, all of the self-pity, all of the patting on the back and all of that. They actually get to where they like that. But you know what? That's why you have to rise up and you have to say, no, I'm going to step into the fullness of what God has for me and I'm going to leave these things behind. And you can't take those things with you, okay? So you must not only get rid of a beggar's garment, but get rid of old mindsets, anything that would hold you back from stepping into the new. And I want to talk more about that when we come back. Hello, my friends. I trust you're enjoying the program today. I just wanted to stop in just for a moment and share with you our special offer that we have at this time. I'm offering my three books, The Sacred Anointing, and Working with Angels, Flowing with God in the Supernatural, and also standing on the shoulders of giants, the release of mantles to the end time generation. I wanna offer these three books as a combo pack for $30. And you might think, Pastor Stephen, that's a really good deal. And you know what, it is a really good deal. I'm even gonna pay the shipping on this. All three of my books for only $30, that's postage paid straight to your address, okay? This is a special that's not even available on my website. This is only for you, my TV viewing audience. I believe these books will bring a great spiritual enrichment into your life. And I wanna send them out to you for $30. I'll pay all the postage. And it's a token of my appreciation for your love and support of this ministry. And I thank you for supporting the Ministry of Fire and Glory. We are broadcasting in 45 nations of the world. We are live streaming in over 70 nations of the world. And the good news of God is going out to multitudes. We have a satellite footprint reaching a potential viewing audience of two billion people. And I want to thank you for putting some wind in the sails of this ministry by purchasing these books. They will be a great blessing to your life. The Sacred Anointing, The Power to Live Your Dream, Standing on the Shoulders of Giants, which talks about how mantles are transferred, just like what happened with Elijah and Elisha and working with angels, you're gonna love this book also. They're my gift to you for $30. I'll pay the postage. Thank you so much for supporting the ministry.
Welcome back, my friends. We're continuing our study with blind Bartimaeus. It's time for his miracle. And you know what? It's time for your miracle also. Now, we have seen that he has taken off the old beggar's garment. And that also, we can look at that from a spiritual aspect of understanding that the old garments can also represent mindsets and thoughts that do not line up with the Word of God. You know, whenever you read your Bible, whenever you study the Word of God, did you know that you're washing your brain? You're cleaning your thought processes. The Word cleans, the Word cleanses, the Word purifies. That's why it's so important to take time to put the living Word of God into our hearts because it will greatly affect our thinking. We actually renew our minds when we hear the Word of God, study the Word of God, and meditate upon it, we actually clean our minds. And so we want to be uh, mindful of that. We've heard of the term before, brainwashing. Uh, sometimes we hear that term used in a very negative way, which can be done, but also there's a positive to that, that you can actually wash and cleanse your thought processes. So old garments, old processes of thinking that are contrary to God's will, you need to just pull those things off right now. And so symbolically, why don't you just reach up and if there's something in your life, some something that you know it's not lining up with the Word of God. See, somebody's listening to me and you've been told you're going to be sick for the rest of your life. Just live with it. Look, look just reach up right now and pull that thing off and throw it away because you don't have to live with it. You can live with healing. How about that? Somebody has been told, you're listening to me, and you've been told that you're going to be poor for the rest of your life. Just uh, somehow manage that. But you know what? Just reach up and pull that thing off of you and throw it away because the Bible tells me in Proverbs 10, that the blessing of the Lord makes rich. It doesn't make you poor. It doesn't make you wiped out and defeated. The blessing of the Lord makes makes one rich. So my friends, if there's any old thought processes that are contrary to the Word of God, just reach up, pull those things down and say, no, I'll have nothing to do with that. And if somebody tries to suppress what Jesus purchased for you at Calvary, you have to rise up like blind Bartimaeus and say, no, 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 no. Jesus, son of David, Jesus, the anointed one, have mercy on me and receive his miracle working power. Now, he's gotten rid of the old garment. Many times before you receive your blessing from the Lord, many times before you receive the miracle breakthrough that God has for you, you must get rid of the old garment. You must get rid of the old mantle before you get the new one. If you want a fresh new anointing, then you have to make room for that. And sometimes you've got to clean out your spiritual wardrobe and get rid of the old stuff that you don't need to be wearing, that's moth-eaten. Get rid of all the old wineskin mentalities and prepare yourself as a new wineskin to receive the new wine. If you want to receive fresh revelation, if you want to receive fresh power and strength from the Spirit of God, my friends, you've got to make room in your heart for that and give God time and give God... Uh, preeminence and give him your very best in all that you do. Now, it's time for the miracle. Verse 51 says, out of Mark chapter 10, so Jesus answered and said to him, now here, here's blind Bartimaeus standing right in front of Jesus and what, watch what Jesus does. He said, what do you want me to do for you? And you would think, Lord, what in the world are you talking about? Bartimaeus is blind as a bat. He can't see anything with his natural eyes. Why would you have a blind man stand in front of you and say, what do you want me to do for you? And I've heard uh, many theologians talk about this verse and uh, appear to be puzzled by it. And from a certain sense, it can appear to be puzzling. But I want to share something with you. Uh, it's not meant to hurt feelings. It's just meant to help. The Lord Jesus is very compassionate and he's very merciful. But the Lord Jesus is not moved by your need. He's moved by your faith. And I want to say that one more time to help you. The Lord Jesus is not moved just because you have a need. And Bartimaeus has a need. But he's not moved by your need. He's moved by your faith. And even with a blind man standing in front of him, he says to Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? Look, my friends, your faith needs to be specific. 
You need to tell the Lord what it is you're desiring. Don't go for plan B, C, or D. Go for that thing that the Spirit of God is stirring in your heart and hold on to the Word of God so that it might come to pass in your life. And Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? And you would think, Jesus, can't you tell he's blind? He wants his sight. But see, the Lord's not moved by your need. He's moved by your faith. And if Bartimaeus would have said, Lord Jesus, son of David, I've had a really bad problem with arthritis in my elbow. And I, I'm blind, but I don't really believe you can do that. But I do have enough faith to believe you can take care of this arthritis. You know what? He would have got healed from the arthritis and would have walked off blind. It's not that the Lord doesn't want him to receive because the Lord does want him and he does want you, he wants you and I to receive, but we must have specific faith. That's why he said, what do you want me to do for you? So what do you want the Lord to do for you? You must be specific and you must be bold about your faith and you must say, Lord, this is what I want. Okay, uh, be able to identify that very, very clearly. So that's what Bartimaeus does. He responds by saying, the blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Not Rabboni, uh, can I have a better, a better pillow to sleep on? Not Rabboni, can I have a ticket to the baseball game? No, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. He's very specific because if you want God to meet your need, you must have specific faith for that need and he's looking for that. The Lord is looking for specific faith not just random faith. Well, I believe that God's word is the inspired word of God. See, that's good, but that's not exactly what he's looking for. Now, I believe there are 66 books. They all comprise one complete word of God. Now, that's good, but that's not what he's looking for. I believe that the Godhead is made of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's good, but that's general faith. See, he's looking for specific faith. In other words, what he promised you that he would do for you, he wants you to take a hold of that and believe him for that. And that's why uh, Bartimaeus said, Lord, I want to receive my sight. Okay, be specific with what it is that you are desiring from the Lord. Verse 52, then Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you well and immediately... He received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Instantaneous miracle. That's not a healing. That's a miracle. Hallelujah. We could talk, call it technically a miracle of healing. Okay. And so he immediately received his sight. And you know, it's amazing because Jesus said to him, he said, go your way, your faith, your faith. See, Bartimaeus' faith had risen to a point from having heard about the healing ministry of Jesus. His faith rose to the point where it was strong enough for him to step off on that word and receive his miracle. And God knows when your faith is at that point. Keep building your faith. Keep building your faith until it fully manifests what it is you're believing for, until it fully manifests in your life. And Jesus says, your faith. See, Sometimes people want to put all of the responsibility over on the Lord. Well, I'm just waiting on the Lord. The whole thing's in God's hands. Now, hold on just a minute. Jesus told Bartimaeus, your faith has made you whole. So we need to trust the Lord and we need to be involved in these spiritual exercises and not put everything over on Jesus. It's like a basketball game. Uh, everybody wants to pass the basketball to Jesus because he'll make all the shots and he'll never miss. They want God on their team. But you know what the Lord does? He'll take the ball and he'll bounce it right back over to you and say, now you take the shot. You use your faith and get involved in this thing also. So your faith, you do have the faith. It will come as you hear the word of God. Your faith will be built strong. Your faith will be built large. And you tell the Lord exactly what you want him to do in your life. And you go for that. And you'll see that your faith will connect with his anointing. See, he's got the anointing. That's what Christ means. It's not Jesus' last name. It's a title in the Hebrew that means the anointed one. What was he anointed with? The Spirit of God. He was literally rubbed down and smeared down with the anointing of God's Spirit that was all over his life. And he has the power to perform the miracle that you need. So what we need to do is we need to connect with the anointing that is upon his life. How do we do that? We do it by believing his word. Not just the general word, although we do believe the general word of God. We believe everything from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22 is all the truth. But my friends, 
You have to understand that God's looking for your specific faith. Now, right now, you've heard the word of God. Faith has come into your heart. And I want you right now to raise your hand. And if there is a place on your body that you need a physical miracle to take place in your body, I want you to take your... I know you might be thinking, Pastor Stephen, I've got 20 things wrong with me. Well, whatever is the worst one, okay, whatever's causing you the most problem, take your hand right now and put it on your body, the anointing. I feel the fire of God coming right now. Take it and put it on your body. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I send the anointing of God's Spirit, God's healing power over the airwaves now. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke the infirmity. I rebuke the sickness. I command the pain to leave. God's healing people right now. Receive. You'll feel fire. Go all over your body. Somebody's feeling fire coming down your neck. You're feeling fire on your back. Somebody's getting their knees healed. Hallelujah. Receive the healing power of God now. Oh, now raise your hands. Begin to thank him and say, Jesus, I receive. Lord Jesus, I receive my healing of and name it. Be specific. Lord, I thank you for healing my sinusitis. Lord, I thank you for healing my backache. I take it now. I believe it. Now release your faith. His anointing is working in your body right now and give him all the praise. Hallelujah. My friends, my time is up. I want to thank you for watching Fire and Glory. This program is on the air because of faithful support of friends and partners just like yourself. I want to ask you to sow a seed into this ministry. Step out in faith. Step out on the water and get involved in expanding the kingdom of God. And I do appreciate your support. And you be blessed. I'll see you next time on Fire and Glory. Thank you for joining us on Fire and Glory. This program was made possible by the heartfelt prayers and generous financial support of the ministry partners and friends of Stephen Brooks International. Please send correspondence to Stephen Brooks International, P.O. Box 717, Moravian Falls, North Carolina, 28654. Or phone our ministry offices at 336-667-7703. Thank you for watching Fire and Glory.